Gregory Robinson. Welcome to The Daily Show. Hey, I'm glad to be here. It's really an honor. I'm so excited to have you here because this is one of the biggest stories. You know, everyone saw it on social media. There was a picture of like what seemed like the universe, everything. And then it was like, here's the old one, here's the new one. And then we all had to act like we knew why <laughs> that was important. <laughs> but you're actually the person behind why it happened and how it, how it got together. So let's start with this. For everybody, everybody to be on the same page, mostly me. Um, <laughs> why is this jump in telescope technology so impressive, and why is it so important? So when we compare, we compare it to Hubble, which was uh, state of the art 30 years ago, mm -hmm. and Webb gives us a much bigger mirror at six and a half meters versus 2.4 uh, for Hubble, and the infrared technology. If you think about look like night vision, yeah, you can see heat uh, uh, through something, uh, so it gives us infrared capability, so we can look through the the dust and clouds and gook of space and look much further back. Uh, of course, our science instruments are a lot more complex too, so the clarity is a lot better and the depth is a lot better. What, what I know uh, is really confusing sometimes when talking about anything in space is that sometimes they say things in terms of time and sometimes they say things in terms of distance. And it gets a little, you know, they'll be like, we're seeing something from 13 billion years ago. And I'm like, w I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what, what, what does that even mean? Well, sometimes I say what as well. So, <laughs> so, so we, we, we're looking at, at light traveling, 186,000 miles per second. Okay. You could imagine that. So we're looking at light, something that happened billions of years ago, and it's just reaching us now. So it's, it's the time distance travel of light, and that's actually what we're looking at. And so we can see what happened a really long time ago somewhere else out there what do we use this information for? Do, like, will it tell us that aliens, like, left a long time, now they're already here? <laughs> does, it, does it tell us where we're gonna go after we destroy Earth? What is it telling us? Well, you know, in, in astrophysics and astronomy, we're always looking to answer questions. Uh, where do we come from? How do we fit into this universe? Are we alone? Which is another one uh, we're, we're looking for. So it, it helps inform us on how we fit in, into the universe. And, and as far as light travel, I remember growing up in the country, and shining a flashlight up in the sky and said, I wonder how, how long it's taken it to get to certain points. Oh, wow. And, which is same kind of thing as light travel. That's what you're looking for. It's interesting you say that growing up in the country because I, I've read your story and you have one of the most fascinating journeys I've ever come across because you grew up, your parents were sharecroppers in rural Virginia, right? You went to a segregated school. You didn't have the education that you wanted to. And then here you are, the man who was brought in to basically get this $10 billion telescope up and running. It was failing before you stepped in. They called you, and they're like, we need you to do this, and you did it. <laughs> how, like, how? Where does that love come from, and how did you get into this world? So, uh, a, a couple of things. One is, um, that education in the segregated school was, was excellent. Uh, wow. We had some of the best teachers in the world. Uh, many of them were far more educated than the teachers in other schools because they couldn't get jobs in industry like they can today. So we had great teachers who really nurtured us and cared about us. Uh, so my beginnings were, were very strong. And so of course I, I lived through the Apollo time, I was a little kid then, which excited me, but that still didn't get my interest in space. So I was in college and, and friends of mine actually did internships at, at NASA and they made it sound, sound so interesting. And a few years later, I started my career in industry, but a few years later I actually joined NASA. And uh, four and a half years ago, um, uh, there were some issues. Um, my boss asked me to, to uh, try to get it over the goal line. Now, I will say a lot of the work was already done, already yeah, completed. Yeah. So uh, thanks to the team for that. And this team is an incredibly, incredibly smart team of people, if you could imagine, at NASA. So smarts is never a shortage <laughs> at NASA, and certainly not for this team. And, th and this team is not just NASA, it's our whole industrial base. Uh, plus the European Space Agency, mm -hmm, the Canadian mm -hmm. Space Agency, two of our, our big partners. Let me ask you a question, and I, I, I believe that you, you're retiring soon, correct? Uh, yes, I'm retiring soon, life comes at me fast. Wow, so, that's, so, that's uh, sad, because I mean, you, you've been around for so long, yeah. you've, been, you've been doing such a great job, so, uh, I know NASA's gonna <laughs> miss you. But, but because you're retiring, I feel like you could, you could probably tell me a few things you wouldn't be allowed to. 
it's like, you know, when, when you're leaving, like, so have you, have you taken any pictures and then seen something that you, like, they don't tell us about? Like, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, let me put it this way. In New York, if you have, like, a super-powered telescope and you shine it at another person's apartment, you might see some things. <laughs> and I'm wondering if you've seen some things out there, but then you, you don't tell us. Or are these all the pictures? You, you can just <laughs> wink if I'm close. You can... <laughs> Well, I think your, your telescope in New York example, you probably see something you've already seen before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think in our case, uh, we will certainly see things we haven't seen before, but a lot clearer. And, and we, will, we will learn things that we can never even imagine. So as we answer questions, we also will create new questions uh, for the future. What are we using the answers to these questions to do? You know, I, I, I understand there is some importance to it, but how does it help what happens on Earth? Or what are people hoping we, we'll learn from these telescopes and what they're revealing? Well, one, we learn a lot about physics. And if you think about it, uh, if you go back many, many years uh, and you think of the physics textbooks, um, we have information today that wasn't there then. And, and if you think about, uh, geez, just 100 years ago, mm -hmm. we thought that was just one galaxy in the whole universe, ours. And uh, Hubble, uh, Hubble Telescope mm -hmm. named after him, discovered more galaxies. So we know a lot more about who we are, where we are, where we come from. And so that's on the astrophysics stamp, uh, side. But uh, other science missions tell us a lot about the Earth, our interaction with the sun, mm -hmm. how that impacts mm -hmm. it. So the Earth has a system within our own solar system. I see. So now that you have the James Webb Telescope, I mean, Hubble was until a few months ago, you know, was everybody's bay in space, you know? And then I, I just f felt a little, you know, I felt a little sad on, on Hubble's behalf. Everyone was just like, ah, look how shit Hubble's pictures are. And <laughs> what, what happens to Hubble now? So Hubble has been operating more than 30 years. Yeah. Um, and again, it was a state of the art. It's gonna continue operating. Okay, okay, So there, good. there are still things uh, we, we benefit from Hubble. Uh, so we're still looking forward to a long time operation. Is there something like Hubble that. can do that, that the Webb Telescope can't do? Uh, not at the level we're talking about. Okay. Uh, not at all. And just uh, so he's I don't just know, being nice to, two, to two or three months. <laughs> well, two or three months ago, uh, uh, Hubble discovered a uh, a star that was 900 million years after the Big Bang. So wrap that around your head: 900 million years. Um, after Big Bang. Now, in, in space, that's still a long time, but when you're talking billions, that's looking back quite a bit. That is really fascinating. I, I, mean, I mean, I just love the idea that, you know, you're part of this mission, you get this telescope, you, you, you know, you have to shoot it up into space, and then you, you start taking the pictures. Who, whose job is it to, to stitch the pictures together and to get to unblur the pictures? Because when you, when you take the picture, it's, <laughs> I've heard it basically looks like nothing. That's what I've been told. It's just, it just looks like somebody has shown you a picture of <laughs> night, and then somebody sits there and they go like, oh, now I see something. Who, like, who, who's doing that and how do you do it and how do you so, know that you actually so are seeing the, a thing if it's like... The, so the scientists actually, they know what they're looking at. Okay. Um, and so they do some, what we call processing to make the pictures look more presentable to, to human eye. Right, to idiots. Uh, you can to, say it. I, yeah. I understand. <laughs> you can, well, I know. I'm, I'm one of those humans too, uh, thank, thank God. <laughs> no, we so, no. Uh, so the scientists process it, they use the science instruments, and okay. then they have some post-processing beyond the instruments to make it look like what we've seen uh, recently. Uh, but they actually know what they're looking at when they receive the, the uh, data. Okay, so images. they get it. Yes. We just, we just, they make it yes. simpler for us. Uh, absolutely. So <laughs> I would love to know where your journey goes from here. I mean, you, you've been part of NASA for such a long time. You've been part of the biggest you know, discovery or, or invention that humans have ever created. Where, where to from here? You retire, and then, and then what do you do? So, so certainly Webb is done from a development standpoint. So now it's the scientist's job for the next 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. I know they would do well. Uh, so it's... Um, it's just that time for me. I'm not running from or to anything. It's just time. Um, but after, as I often say, don't let the good looks fool you. I'm still a young man. <laughs> uh, but but, uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm getting up there. So, so I still plan to do some, some other things. Okay. Uh, still exploring what I'm going to do when I grow up. I I'm, love looking, this. I'm looking forward I to it. I love this. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. 